I don't want to sit here and refill all my strategy. <laughs> I am the first speaker among the three of us running. So they will spy on me. <laughs> so you will have a limited answer here today. <laughs> Another day you can bring me back. Tinubu brought during the campaigns about his strategies. We all know how these lies turned out. The two biggest lies they sold Nigerians during the campaigns was that first he built Lagos and that he will replicate the same thing at the national level. That's why he appointed all the people he worked with in Lagos. He appointed Wale Edu, who served as the finance commissioner in Lagos at the time. He is now the finance minister. Also, Yemi Kadoso, now CBN governor, he was the commissioner for economic planning. Dele Aleke, now minister for solid minerals, he was the Lagos commissioner for information. Another finance commissioner in Lagos at the time, Ayodeji Ario, he is now the director general of Bureau of Public Enterprises. There are many others that worked with him in Lagos, like Jide Idris, who was the commissioner for health. He is now the DG of NCDC. So essentially what Tinubu did was to appoint many people he worked with in Lagos to Abuja. He gave them positions and Nigerians can now judge whether these people are competent or not. So it's not about competence like it happened during Buhari's time. Buhari's appointment at the time were so lopsided that people complained. Why is he not observing federal character in the appointments? But they were shut down that it's all about competence that they should appoint anyone that can do the job. We also know how that one ended up. Tinubu has continued the same pattern by appointing people from one particular side of the country or even one particular state. The second lie they sold to Nigerians during the campaigns was that Tinubu has the special ability to appoint and fish out special talents wherever they are that he has this ability to identify technocrats who know their job, that they will perform wonders once he appoints them to office. We all know how this one is going. Yes, it's not in contention that they failed. Tinubu himself accepts the fact that they failed woefully. Otherwise, he wouldn't have created the new Presidential Economic Coordination Council. This new council is made up of the likes of Dangote, Tony Lumelu, Bismarck Rewane, the central bank governor, and many other civil servants. As a major player in Nigeria's economy, Dangote has been a member of many economic panels set up by the federal government. He started during Yaradra's time. He was appointed to one economic council. Good luck Jonathan did the same thing. He appointed him and Buhari did the same thing, appointed him also. So Tinubu is just copying the three past administrations. Where are the strategies? Is it a strategy of copying others? Well, there's nothing wrong in copying others. Just do the right thing. Everyone wants the country to work. But the fact that he bragged that he had all the strategies, he had all the answers, that he would do the job, but instead of doing the job, in one year, he plunged the country into a deeper mess than he met it. So it has gone beyond strategizing and trying to correct the mess because he has created a worse situation. What is needed is a complete overhaul. The entire team needs to be removed, disbanded completely so that new people can come in, people that are competent because it's obvious that these guys are not competent. Otherwise, our economy wouldn't have fallen to this level. What was Nigeria's GDP when he came to power? What is it today? At what point would Nigerians say, no, we are headed to the wrong direction, we need to change course? You see, what is going on is like what happens in mafia movies, where you have the mafia boss appointing all the people into positions where they will do the job he wants them to do. The mafia boss is there not because of competence, but because he's the stronger person. He fought his way to the top. This is exactly what is happening in Nigeria today. Tinubu is the politician that can maneuver and bribe his way, buy his way to the top. So when he sits there, he will be appointing anyone that he feels will do the job. But unfortunately, that special talent they claim he has to identify technocrats that can do the job is non-existent. He has resorted to appointing economic players, the big economic players in Nigeria, 
that will simply go there to protect their own interests. Yes, the way Dangote is criticizing the current administration, he has never done that the past 25 years or even longer. He's not wrong though, because things are getting out of hand. Multinationals have left Nigeria in their numbers. Dangote doesn't have anywhere to run to, he's a Nigerian. He can't just pack his bag and leave. Except the situation becomes too hard that he will be forced to close down some of his factories. In fact, looking at the whole thing, it looks like Dangote was given this appointment in order to shut him up. After all, he is now part of the whole process. If things continue to get out of hand, he can't blame anyone. That's how most administrations work. If you're not with them, they try to put you to come to them so that they will give you an appointment to shut you up permanently. You're part of the government. You can't be criticizing their policies. It doesn't work. You can't criticize your employer. You'll simply be sacked. And by that time, they can now say, ah, this man was incompetent. He doesn't have any authority to be criticizing and all that blah, blah, blah they will use to shut the person or kill his career. So what is happening now is that Dangote wholeheartedly accepted this appointment with the feeling that they would take his advice. What of if they don't? You see, that's the problem. The administration is interested in generating more money, IGR, IGR everywhere. They are not interested in reducing the cost of governance. Imagine appointing the largest cabinet in Nigeria's history. So it's not as if they are not aware of how to save costs to reduce the expenditure of government in order to divert the saved money to other priority projects, but they are simply focused on political patronage. That's the problem. Look at what is going on in the FCT. There are people living in IDP camps in the federal capital territory of Nigeria. But instead of addressing that and relocating them, they are spending 37 billion naira reconstructing the Ape court complex and homes for judges. People that are not even up to 500, they will spend 37 billion naira just to house them and refurbish their offices. This is coming after they spent 20 something billion naira just for the vice president's mansion. So you can see their priority is not economic development. Their priority is simply taking care of themselves, enjoying the trappings of office. With the level of hardship Nigerians are going through right now, it is sheer wickedness that the customs exchange rate is still as high as 1,500 naira to $1. Despite the fact that it is affecting their revenue, they still refuse to reduce the exchange rate. It was reported a few days ago that the frequency of container vessels arriving in Nigeria has seriously reduced. Some of them that used to carry up to 4,000 containers at a time now carry about 300 containers entering Nigeria. So this is a serious reduction in economic activity in Nigeria. They know this. Instead of reducing the cost of shipment, the cost of doing business in Nigeria, they keep on increasing the cost. So they don't need any economic advisor. This is common sense. Even a roadside seller knows this. Once your cost is high, you cannot retail less than your cost. You must add your own profit before you sell. So their policies are driving away businesses. Even a Nigerian businessman cannot trust the system. He cannot trust that when he invests his money, he's able to recover his capital, not to talk of making profit. When you're placing that order for your container, you're not even sure of how much you will pay on duty. It is when it arrives that they will calculate the duty for you. So you cannot plan. Business requires certainty. If there are uncertainties, then there's a problem. No one can operate in such an environment. It's very hostile. No one gambles with his capital because if the business goes south, you will end up in the village. It's as simple as that. They make life very difficult for the common man. How can 20-year-old cars cost more than 7 million naira in today's Nigeria? The more cars get old, the more they become cheaper, except they are classic cars. Why does this absurdity exist in Nigeria? You buy and ship a car for about $2,000 to Nigeria. When it arrives, the customs will charge you a little over $2,000 as duties. How is that possible? These are cars that used to cost less than 1 million naira 10 years ago. For those that would defend and say that the excessive charges at the ports is to help local car manufacturers, do Nigerians have the purchasing power to buy new cars at the moment? No, they can't afford it. That's why they are buying used cars from abroad. 
and the government also successfully made sure that they can no longer afford the used cars. Going back to Dangote's appointment, what will happen if the government refuses to heed his advice? Is he going to resign the appointment and go back to criticizing the government? Maybe this time around, Dangote will protest and carry placards against the government. Who knows? Nothing is impossible. Thanks for watching.